Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be providing a demonstration of the F5 IPAM controller and we're going to be going through a user guide that I've just created and a GitHub repo where you can find all the information so that you can go ahead and test this functionality out yourself. So what exactly is this F5 IPAM controller and how does it work? So the F5 IPAM controller is a Docker container that you can pull from Docker Hub. And its responsibility is really to, of course, allocate IP addresses from a static list. And so the static list is maintained by the IPAM controller. And that static list is configured within the IPAM controller's manifest that you deploy in Kubernetes. The IPAM controller watches the CRD resources um, for the specific host names that are configured within each resource. And then the IPAM controller will provide status to, these, to this IPAM custom resource definition or custom resource, which would then feed the information to F5's container ingress services, which would then, of course, feed that up to the F5 big IP. So F5 CIS and F5 IPAM controller work in conjunction with communicating across the same custom resource to provide the IPAM configuration for you. And you can see in the diagram that what's happening is the Kubernetes administrator creates his or her CRD resource. In this case, my example here is F5 Demo My Site, and my host name is mysite.f5demo.com. What's really important here is the label, because the IPAM label is providing the IP range that's going to be associated to that specific resource. So in my case, I'm using an IPAM label of test. And you'll see in the example earlier, test is a label which defines a range of IP addresses that are going to get pulled from IPAM and allocated to this resource. And so you can have potentially as many IPAM labels as you want for whatever makes sense. So for example, test, production, or a specific group of developers or maybe a specific namespace. It really depends upon you and how you define these names is defined in the IPAM controller, which I'll show you. So as you go ahead and create your CRD, what will happen is the CRD will get created. Um, that CRD, CIS will actually communicate across the same API with the IPAM controller. And what will happen is the IPAM CRD is going to be created as well. So when the, when the when the CRD is created, the IPAM controller custom resource is updated. So what's, ha what's happening here is you can see my, 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 my host of mysite.f5demo.com is now updated with, in the IPAM CR with the specific host specs. In this case, it's mysite.f5demo.com with a label of test. You can see there is the, the host and the, the, the label. And what will happen is the IPAM controller will allocate an IP in, in this case, or it will relinquish that IP and hand it back over. And as you can see, that's, that's what's happened in this case. So also what will happen is the IPAM controller will also update the status of the IP address that's allocated. So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how this all works. So if you can log on to my big IP, change to my Kubernetes tenant. As you can see, I have no configurations at this point. So I have a, I have a um, couple of CRDs configured uh, available to me in Kubernetes. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, let's cat on the CRD first so we can take a look. This one is going to be my app. So as you can see right here, my host name is myapp.f5demo.com. This is an this is an IPAM label of production. And so if I want to see what the configuration is for production, 
I can take a look at my GitHub repo. I can go into the IPAM configuration. And inside the IPAM configuration for production, I've allocated the following IPAM range, or if you want to call it IP range space in this case. So from 20 addresses from 30 to 50, and for test, I've allocated from 113 to 116. But again, you can do anything you want, uh, and you can provide any variable name you want here. I'm just using test and production. So in this case here, I have my app, and the other one that I have is my site.yaml. So we'll cat yes dash my site. And so here's the other example. In this one here, uh, this label is test with my site.f5 demo. And um, you can see my backend there. So let's go ahead and create these. So kubectl create minus f vs. Let's do my app first. You will notice right away, you will see it's created. The first thing that you're going to see here is the communication between the F5, big IP, and CIS. So CIS is sending the API call. In this case, we're using the AS3-based API to update the big IP's configuration. What you'll also see, if I'm monitoring the IPAM, you can actually see here that we allocated a request. We allocated, allocated a request for hostname MyApp. And you can see there is the IP address. It's the first IP of the range. And there was the update right there. And so if we take a look back at the big IP, we can see that there is there is the first one. And this one here is if we take a look at the resource itself, we will see in the resource, this is myapp.f5demo.com. And if I go ahead and create the second one for my site, so kubectl create minus f, and this is for my site. And you can see there is the update update of the big IP. See, there's the request. There's the update. And this is the update for, for my site, which is over there is the host name. There's the allocation. It's actually very, very fast. And you'll see that too when you test it. It's really fast. These updates are... Um, as you can see, added right away. As soon as that CRD is created, IPAM automated, automatically updates the IPAM CR um, with that information. You can actually view that IPAM CR if you wanted to as well. You could actually see the status um, of the of the two. You wouldn't naturally go and edit the IPAM custom resource because that is managed by the IPAM controller itself. However, you can view that configuration if you wanted to. We could actually go uh, and see how to, to actually view that if, if you really wanted to, or you could even, if you really wanted to as well, you could actually edit it, which I wouldn't recommend, but you can if you want. You can actually see it right there. And this is actually the IPAM CR that is managed by the IPAM controller and CIS is communicating, pulling the information from here. So you can see right here, the host specs that I created was my app, my site with the two different IPAM labels. And these are the addresses that were allocated from the range that I created in, in the deployment. So how do you go about testing this? So I created this user guide and I will provide the links in in the in, in, in the video so that you can get here. But it's basically off my off my repo. I created this this readme document so that you could literally just clone my repo and pull the all pull all the information in. By the way, there's an error in my diagram, I need to fix it. I will fix that by the time you want monitor that. So recommendation and some of the prerequisites. So it's required that you, you, you we're using AS3. This is part of the CIS 2.4 re release, which was released last week. It is also, um, you also require the F5 IPAM controller uh, for Kubernetes that uh, 
that works with C works with CIS. So as you can see, I've provided um, the links to all the all the prerequisites that you need, and of course all of the setup options. So you could literally just follow my guide um, on how to configure this. So you'll you will set the configuration in in the CIS deployment to say I'm using IPAM is equal to true. In my case, I'm using shared nodes, but you, you don't have to. That's just something I was testing. Uh, here is my IPAM controller. This is where you would define your range, what level of debugging you would need to use. And then of course, to deploy the IPAM, you'll create the specific RBAC that you need for IPAM to be able to communicate with CIS. The Of course, the IPAM has a schema, and that schema is for the IPAM custom resource. And then, of course, you'll create the IPAM deployment. Once you've done that, you can actually view the login of the IPAM, and you can actually see what it's storing and how it's actually allocating um, the different stores. And then you can actually go ahead and create your resource definitions at that point, uh, and and kind of off you you kind of off you kind of you kind of off off to pretty much do what you want at that point, and then of course you can view you can view this as well. So again, this is all in in in, in CIS 2.4. My next video, and again on YouTube, is going to be CIS using IPAM for type load balancer. I'm going to create that next, and what you're going to see after that coming up in a in potentially in, in a, maybe in six weeks is you're going to see IPAM communicating with info blocks, and so that's coming uh, in a few in a, probably about six weeks, six to eight weeks. So I'll go ahead and post all the information uh, from the links on how to go ahead and 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 configure this uh, in the video. So thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoy this new feature.